Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and staying really safe. So today I've got a such exciting review to share with you all and this is the new, well, is it new? The re-released Hourglass Absolute Strobe Light. Hang on, no. And this is the Hourglass Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. So this was originally released in 2017, I think probably as part of their holiday collection and people went nuts for it, people were obsessed with it, people fell in love with it and then, typical Hourglass, they were like, no, 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 you can't have it we're gonna take it away. So it was limited edition, it sold out super quickly, everybody loved it, went nuts for it, and for three years, three years, have apparently been begging Hourglass to please, please bring it back, and they have. We don't really know if it's permanent or still limited yet, but as we can see, the proof is in the pudding. Literally nothing has to be limited edition forever, as we know in makeup, quite often things start as limited edition and then become permanent. So if we keep harassing them, and it does really, really well, I'm sure it will be with us for longer. It is now available, it is here on Hourglass's brand new UK website. They did claim to do free next day shipping on their new website, but with everything that's going on, this took an extra day to get to me, which was understandable. But I had a really pleasant experience. It was nicely packaged and it arrived pretty decent time with free delivery. So, so far, so good for Hourglass's new UK website. We've got to love a brand who supports the UK market. I also saw Hourglass responding to someone's comment that when will it be on your partner, your stockist website, so Cult Beauty, um, all the places that sell Hourglass in the UK, Space NK, among others, and they said the 15th of May. So if you want to wait until then, they will be on those partner websites too. So I did do some comparison swatches of this palette to see if I had anything similar in my collection. And there are some that are kind of in the same ballpark, but nothing that's a bang on dupe. So I will share with you my closest matches that I have for each of these shades. And at the end of the video, I will be showing you loads and loads of comparison swatches. So you can see if you have something like it, or if you've seen something like it before that you didn't like, and hopefully that will help you make your decision as to whether this is worth the money for you, because it is expensive. So the first shade, this is Absolute Stroke light and here it is swatched for you and this is like a pinky toned highlight it's very icy but it has like a pink sort of rosy tone to it now the closest shade match I found for this was from this Dior backstage palette and it's this pinky shade down here it's not that close the pink in the Dior palette is much pinker um, and a little more shimmery as you will see they're not super close but they're the closest that I had in my collection so I didn't have anything super close to that one next up this is the shade pure strobe light the lightest in the palette and it's kind of a yellow tone to it so this one I had a pretty close match to and it was in the Charlotte Tilbury bar of gold palette and it's this lightest shade here and I'm sure you can probably see they look pretty similar even in the pan um, and swatched they are as similar as it gets for me in this palette they are both a sort of champagne with a strong yellow tone so these are very very close very very similar um, in shade so if you have the bar of gold from Charlotte Tilbury then you pretty much have that middle shade from the hourglass palette and now the last shade which is the lucent strobe light which is this sort of bronzy looking shade the deepest shade in the palette so worth noting this is pretty close to my skin tone this shade kind of like melts into my skin beautifully but worth noting if you have deeper skin um, that this is pretty much my skin tone so it's going to be lighter and brighter on you if you have deeper skin and the closest I found to that shade is Becca's Opal so this was again a not bad but certainly not a dupe the Becca is more of a sort of metallic um, and it's a little lighter 
in shade as you can see that's the hourglass i will have loads of swatches at the end of the video in natural daylight so you can see these much more realistically as opposed to under these lights but this does kind of give you an idea of like the metallic look and how bright they are when you've got like a light or a flash shining on them so those are the closest dupes that i have and without further ado let's zoom in and apply these to the face so I used a pretty matte foundation and a matte bronzer today so we could really see what these highlights do and know that any glow is coming just from the palette. So I'm going to go in first of all with this shade as this is the shade that is closest to my skin tone. I'm using my Linda Holberg 306. So this is a kind of shade that I like to use on my cheekbones. Woo! Woo! Okay. That's... That's bright. I don't think I was expecting that. I think what I've heard about this palette is although it's like mega blinding, it just melts really easily into the rest of your skin. So although that is definitely a beaming highlight, it doesn't show as like, when you look forward, as a sort of streak on your face. It's, it's easy to blend in, if that makes sense. And I definitely agree. It's definitely, although it's like super, bright it's definitely like melting in i'm not finding it hard to like make it blend with my bronzer and i obviously would go in after this with blush to even blend more and i think that blends really nice and seamlessly so on the other side i'm going to use this one which is the absolute strobe light the pinky shade this brush picks up a lot of products so i'm definitely gonna tap it off oh my gosh wow again really really blinding highlight this is something else metallic is definitely the word definitely the word for me this one is a little because it's that much lighter on my skin tone this one doesn't melt as easily as seamlessly into the skin as this side does it's definitely more of a like over the top highlight on my skin tone if you have lighter skin then it won't be as crazy I think I might use switch to my Rafa brush this is my Rafa fan brush number 20 and I'm going to use this one in all the other places like above my brow where I want it to be softer so I'm going to try that same shade but we'll see with a fan brush whether this gives a bit of a softer effect for those of you who want a more natural highlight and not quite as much as that yeah so if you are like me wanting more of a glow a softer glow luminous sort of more natural look a fan brush will give you that easy or just a less a softer maybe a natural hair brush will give you a more sort of natural lighter application than one that's a bit more sort of denser and firmer like the Linda Holberg. So down the bridge of my nose I'm going to use that last shade which is the pure strobe light and I'm going to use this down the bridge of my nose. That brush is too large for down there. Switch back to my Linda Holberg for that top lip cupid's bow area. It's so hard to do when you've already got lipstick on. Um, and using that middle shade still on my chin this is scary because I don't want my chin to be insane. Okay, so you can actually use it really lightly there. That's actually not too crazy at all. Um, then I'm going to switch to my Diddy Zueva 238 and I'm going to use that middle shade in the inner corners because I really like a nice icy bright inner corner. Wow, that's beautiful there. I've literally got highlight on my entire nose. That was a mistake. Don't do that. And then for under my brow arch, I'm going back into this pinky shade. I think that'll look really pretty. Wow. These are not messing around. They are not messing around at all. Okay, so my thoughts are, my gosh, I'm like looking like a glazed donut right now. My favourite shade is definitely the, the bronzier shade, I just think for my skin skin tone it keeps things a little, just a little bit more of this world. 
um, I think the, the middle shade is perfect if I choose it well on my nose instead of using a much too large brush because I'm a rookie, then that would look really nice. But unfortunately, <laughs> this happened. And now I don't know what to do. I should have brought my, oh my God, I'm making it worse. I'm making it worse. But if I, that was my fault, I should have used a thinner brush. My nose is thin enough as it is, so I, I didn't help myself. But aside from my own haphazard, giant fat hand disasters, this has gone on really beautifully. It's very seamless. Like I said, I haven't gone in with blush over the top like I usually do to melt highlight and bronzer together, but it's still, it's, it's melting beautifully into the skin. It is very, very dramatic and bright, like even more so than I was expecting, even based on people's reviews. If you'd like a soft, subtle, barely there highlight, this is clearly a pass for you. It's even trying to use it with a fluffier fan brush, it's, you know it's still it's it's still there it's really there so yeah i think if if you like something much more subtle much more natural this is going to be a pass for you because it's going to be tricky to to achieve really subtle with this and um, you might get something slightly toned down but i think you know you, you've got better options if you want something more natural this is for like a beaming full glam glazed donut type of effect you know so i think this is beautiful it definitely kind of ticks a box i don't really have in my collection i.e it's a crazy wet beaming highlight that i don't really own anything like and i certainly not in the options that i have in here the nut that having the three different shades depending on my skin tone you know more in winter i'll use the lighter shades more at the moment i'm preferring this shade because it just flatters my skin tone more i don't think this is necessarily designed perfectly for deeper skin um i think deeper skin tones probably will not love like these two shades and will only really get much use out of that one so it's, it's maybe not worth it for you but i will definitely be checking out some reviews to see and as always if you have deeper skin and you own this palette and it does work on you please let us know in the comments down below um, so we can share that information i think on fair skin light skin you'll be absolutely golden you'll be able to use all three shades in here tan skin you'll be able to use all three shades in here medium skin medium to tan like me you'll be able to use all three uh, shades in here I think it's gorgeous. I'm really, really happy with it. I think it's going to last you a lifetime. I have seen people hitting pan on this though, so I certainly hope they do make it permanent because I think it's beautiful and I know that I will keep reaching for it and just learning which brushes to use because I just wasn't ready, to be honest. It's, it's taken me by surprise. I was not prepared. This was not what I was expecting to happen today. I'm still shocked. So the Natural Daylight Swatches, I've compared every highlight pretty much that I have in my collection that was anything similar um, in Natural Daylight, so I hope that's helpful for you. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.